Hi, this is Frederick from Detroit Berlin, a channel about music gear, music production and modular synthesizers. And today we're going to take a look at the Tegler audio manufacturer EQP1, which is a Pultec style EQ and it has a few bands. It is a dual mono or stereo EQ and I use this in my master bus, my mastering chain, which also consists of the Tegler very tube compressor. I did a video on that one, so also please check that out. But today we're going to take a look at the EQP1. Let's first quickly go over all the controls. It's a pretty simple unit, but that is one thing I really like. From left to right, these channels are exactly the same. One is left, one is right. The in slash bypass switch, put it in the in position and it's on. And in the bypass position, it just passes through the sound without applying the EQ. If we take a look at the knobs and the switches, we got these three bigger knobs slash switches and they select the frequency range. This one is 20, 30, 60 and 100 hertz. The second switch is 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16 and 20,000 hertz. And the last one is 5, 10 and 20,000 hertz or 5, 10, 20 kilohertz. And then we got the smaller knobs and these actually boost or cut those frequencies. So the first two are the boost and the cut of the 20, 30, 60 and 100 hertz. Then you got a width control and a boost. That's for the second switch. And then you got a cut and that's for the last switch. So the last one you can only cut. The middle one you can only boost and the lowest one, the first one, you can boost and cut. Of course, if you put these like on 10 and this one also on 10, you can apply a cut and a boost to the 10 kilohertz range. Because it's a Pultec style EQ, you can do the trick of boosting and cutting and what will this create? The boost will be at 20 Hz, the cut will be a little bit higher so that you got the boost and the cut just making the sound not too extreme, having a really punchy, nice, clean boost. This is a stereo EQ and stereo EQ is really interesting to do mid side. EQing, which I'm able to with the use of the SSL Fusion. I'm sending whether it be a stereo signal or a mid-side signal. I'm sending that to the EQP1 and inserting it into the SSL Fusion. Most of the time I will use that in mid-side. What mid-side actually is, the mid will only affect the signals that are centered and the side the other channel is actually only adjusting the signals that are on the left and on the right. So if you boost the highs in the sides, like the hi-hats, they will get wider, you get more dimension. The kick, you can boost it in the mid channel and the side channel, you can lower that kick to yeah, get it more mono. So you have a lot of options when you're working in mid-side mode. If you're working in stereo mode, you just repeat the settings. Like if you boost 20 Hertz, you need to put the switches at 20 Hertz. You don't need to, but it's advised. And if you cut, then you cut the same left and right. Most of the times, personally, I have more of a use of this unit when putting it in mid-side mode. It is a brilliant EQ. So I've got this noise source, very linear noise source with 
all frequencies, so it's a pretty linear curve. You can follow me on the screen. I created two sources, one on the left and one on the right. When I would only create one mono noise source, that would be only the mid channel and the side channels, they wouldn't have any effect. So I created two noise sources, one on the left and one on the right. So when I use the EQP1 for processing the mid side channels, then you will actually hear what it's doing and how it's widening those frequencies or bringing them closer to the mid. So let's have a listen. Not the most nice signal, but it's really handy to see how it boosts and how it cuts those frequencies. Let's go to 100 Hz and let's start boosting. Now I'm boosting the side. The lower channel is a side. Not too much is changing on the screen, but it's actually, you can hear it. So with boosting and cutting you can balance really well. Okay, let's... So the nice thing about mid-side is you don't need to use both channels at the same frequency. You can boost the mid at 30 Hz and you can cut and boost 100 Hz. So you got more frequencies to play with. So that I think is really interesting and I'm really glad that you have controls over both sides so I think that's brilliant thing on this unit so let's continue let's begin boosting some higher frequencies again the side this means the width and it's a very narrow width and I can make the curve wider now you can see on the screen that when you really boost it you can really see everything becoming way louder it's a pretty raw depiction it's most interesting if you hear what it's doing so let's tone down a bit of that harshness Of course, it's more interesting if I do it on actual music. This is just to give an idea that you can do a lot with it. The only thing I would 
immediately say that is it's really nice if you need some some brightness some air in your music or really get those vocals more up front or the bass give it more body therefore this is a wonderful unit if you want to add a lot of warmth if you want to boost to 300 400 500 to yeah a thousand maybe 2000 hertz then this unit uh, it is 20 30 60 and 100 hertz and then it begins from 3000 4000 5000 and so on so what i noticed is that you easily boost things and then your mix or your sound can become a little bit too bitey in the high end and too strong in the low end maybe so you really need to be careful with boosting too much i think the magic lies when you really use it in a subtle way i prepared a drum loop and i would say let's just try it on that drum loop and see how it will adjust the sound i think for punch for body it's an amazing unit i wouldn't mind if there were more like mid frequencies to play with but it's already a pretty packed unit i really like it and let's now go over to the drums that i prepared and let's give that a go so hope you enjoy this Let's give it some air. I put it on 20,000 Hertz. You can hear that sizzle. Make the curve wider, make it smoother. It won't get that high. If you really peak it, if you put it narrow then you more like peak the curve and you get more an aggressive um, adjustment. Let's take the mid one and this is too harsh. See? So this was without the EQ. And this is the result with only tweaking a few things. And to my opinion, this sounds a lot better. This is a little bit dull, not so exciting, not really punchy. This is cleaner, this is, my opinion, way better. Let's try to adjust it in a different way. So let's see. You really hear now panning because I'm boosting only the sides at 10,000 Hz so it's 
really getting lively. Now just more this sizzle. Now I'm boosting the loaves in the sides and then it can really fall apart. So let's do a little cut there. Okay, let's compare it. Can feel the body. This is pretty flat. This is more powerful and more like a finished product. So I think that was pretty interesting and a pretty quick way to yeah, improve the sound. The nice thing, just like the Veritube compressor from Taylor Audio, is that I'm using it in a way that I'm not only using it to master, but also when I'm recording synthesizers or when I'm yeah, passing through drum loops or whatever, I can route it through this unit, I can do adjustments, make it nicer, I can route vocals through it, you call it, you name it. You can apply it to so many different things and you can use it over and over again. Record it back into the DAW and yeah, have this unit on almost every track and have it add to the sound and create the, this nicer mix. So I think price-wise it's not super cheap, but if you take in mind that you have two channels and quite some options and a really quality sound, nicely built unit, German manufacturing, then I think that is really a bargain. Like I said, you can put it on so many things. You can put it in a master chain, the way I'm using it, next to using it on other things that I'm recording. Um, I think it, it's, it's wonderful to have it in your arsenal. I put a link in the description to this unit. It's an affiliate link, so if you perhaps buy something via that affiliate link, maybe the EQP1 or something else, then you support the channel and that would be extremely helpful so I can make more videos, go more in depth in these units and in music production in general. Hope you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hope see you next time. Bye bye.